YouTube is a platform that's been around for a long time and it's had loads of controversy from creator drama scandals and monetization issues. But today we'll be inevitably getting into the various double standards that have been slowly suffocating all the creators and all of this platform it's been like that for a while. But to do so we need to look at the recent current events and the controversies YouTube's had over the years. So without further ado, let's get started. If there's eight dudes on security and they're all black, I think that's worth noting. I mean, they were all like six, five black yeah. dudes. Like, yeah, yeah, that's terrible. I, I would love people saying, oh, Leafy, come back. I would love to see Leafy come back and try to explain the landscape today. Like, the content that he was making would never fly on YouTube today. And you have to adapt and overcome the fact that, like, you can't even curse, bro. For a long time I've been wanting to make a video about the double-edged sword that is YouTube because while it being a platform for creators to quote unquote uh, express themselves, they really lost the you in YouTube and you can't really broadcast yourself anymore. However, while I don't really necessarily agree with the YouTube drama or want to get into it, this is something I personally wanted to shed some light on. Now I'm personally not on either side of this bullshit 2016 cookie cutter drama and in no way am I defending Leafy or Keemstar's actions. I really just want this drama to be fucking over with. However, Atri Atri has been here for ages, and he's well established himself here on this platform as one of the bigger creators, and by no means just because he's friends with Susan should he be let off on such circumstances. But the thing that I'm here to really shed some light on is the fact that even though Leafy has made a lot of videos in a harassing way according to YouTube and Atri Atri, I thought we might as well bring up the amount of times in my opinion that Ethan has made a lot of videos in a harassing way on Keemstar and Leafy. Ethan Klein, Atri Atri, whatever you want to call him, I could go on as long as I could and bring up every little thing he's done. However, it'd be pointless because we'd be going in circles and everybody's already done that. I just hope we don't. our channel doesn't get terminated. While being very known for taking advantage of people when it'll benefit him in the slightest way possible, I've come to notice how he discards them quickly afterwards. He's thrown multiple people under the bus in and out of his podcast because he's known for choosing favorites, but at least Kim can admit when he's in the wrong and like Atri Atri. And along with even platforming someone who's harming individual creators, too many people haven't noticed continuously how far irrelevant he's become. However, most of the drama I could bring up that is put together in a better format is in a video by Turkey Tom, so I'll just put it in the description for you to check out. But this drama goes to show how YouTube's completely sided with Ethan and how he's gone downhill more than ever. And you can even notice this when his friends aren't even coming to his defense. For example, Idubs a good friend of Atri Atri who also dislikes Keemstar. Wanna know why I think Idubs isn't coming to aid Atri in this drama? Because he knows Ethan Klein is killing his own career by doing said actions. The double standard I see in this drama is how, for starters, Atri's received no repercussions or harassment strike or anything for starting the drama. But Keemstar getting his channel punished with no monetization. Someone, no matter the channel size, shouldn't be put on a pedestal as much as Atri is, and he should be dealing with the same amount of punishment as Leafy did. That is if we're talking about the same amount of videos one made on a person. Because like I have shown before, there are a plethora of videos on Leafy and Keemstar together in the past three months spiking drama against them. And since they're all by Atri, I think it's personally immoral to say that Atri didn't do anything wrong in the situation when he was the one who spiked the drama in the first place. And don't get me wrong, I have respect for what he's done with his podcast, but honestly, while listening to a podcast isn't my go-to thing to entertain myself with, I'll admit for the shit person he is, it's impressive how he's connected mainstream and traditional celebrities with YouTube. But even though he's connecting the mainstream media to YouTube while putting celebrities in the spotlight on his podcast, he still should be held accountable for his actions. When he was going on his crusade on Keemstar and Leafy, bringing up every single little thing they did, and ignoring every little action he's done as well, I think we should take note on how hypocritical it was of him to do so. But since I'd rather not talk down on someone for an entire video and bring up every single problem he's done, we're just going to discuss how everyone deplatformed Leafy. Now let me enlighten you about the YouTube harassment policies a tiny bit that were updated a while back. It states that they want to prevent harassment on the website, which is, in their definition, content that threatens another person. However, the issue with this, even though it may look good from reading it at first, it's a very loose definition, as it is mainly targeting commentary content, where one individual may criticize another person. It's, um, 
consult also with experts too. So we're starting to do a lot more of understanding, you know, sort of where do we draw these lines. I'm no big creator, however, she shouldn't need to consult an expert to review the roles and guidelines when she has access to all the creators who actually use the website, you know, to help us define the line that us creators can't cross. Now a topic I would like to shed light on is the fact of how a percentage of people were for deplatforming Leafy's channel when the drama was going down. Unfortunately, however, he was sniped off the platform within the duration of time he came back. But the more you look into it, the more we can pinpoint and highlight the main people who were speculating why and who got Leafy banned. The main accused on this list were Pokimane, Atri Atri, and clearly the CEO of YouTube. However, here's the thing, it isn't necessarily who did it, it's about how it was done. YouTube is a company that can do whatever it wants, and it's perfectly in the obvious that they don't want Leafy on the platform. But the issue with these rules and guidelines on the platform that ban Leafy marks the end of an era, the end of edgy or satire content on this platform. The deletion of Leafy's profile is more than just a simple banning. It's a message that no matter how big you get your channel, no matter how big you grow as a creator, YouTube will still annihilate you if they don't like you. And although banned quickly without any warning, I personally believe he shouldn't have been such a focused target when there's bigger problems the platform's facing today. 2020 was a year showing plenty of problems on the platform such as the problematic copyright issues, the false copyright issues, the BS monetization getting revoked from creators, and the loose harassment policies. Needless to mention, the scum that has been on the platform for years and YouTube still has done nothing about it. There are people who abuse the platform given to them by doing things which I will just leave Riffo to discuss. Look man, why do you keep talking about the situation when you know that no matter what you say, no one is going to defend you? In fact, at this point, you shouldn't even have a platform to defend yourself because you've been convicted. Because some people some people do care, Rithro. How is that though? You're a pedophile. Hello everyone, my name is Rith. We all know it, and we are most certainly all aware of it, that there are clearly issues within the YouTube system as well as the staff at YouTube headquarters. And to be quite frank with you, I don't think our own CEO knows what she's doing either. We do have values, okay. and we always have had community guidelines, and we've always said, these are the... I'm not going to lie, we have some incompetent people as much as we do morally incorrect ones, and there isn't much to say about it without initiating some form of debate when defending YouTube, because like all companies that have the rule of thumb, and especially when you're a company like YouTube, you're going to have to appeal to the global agenda and culture, as to what they like to call it. And I find that to be very hard to believe when you have a particular person on the platform still uploading content, and if we play into what Susan says as a part of someone's culture, we can begin by bringing Lion Maker into the picture. Lion Maker was a man back in 2013 to 2018 that was a children's entertainer that uploaded Minecraft content, until the day when Colossal is Crazy made a massive expose video on Lion Maker shedding light upon him and his disgusting and predatory behavior regarding his sexual relationship with 16 year old Paige the Panda. For more information about the Lion Maker situation, I highly recommend you to go watch Colossal's video about the subject so that you can get more context in the full story. But this story was a big one for the entire YouTube community and for obvious reasons. But for our case, we have our own narrative, because YouTube CEO Susan, back in a 2018 interview, stated her policies resemble the broad rules that are sensitive across all cultures, something that Lion Maker even said when he was under fire. And so we might have different values here in the US, but then you go to India or Thailand or Vietnam and they have a different set of values. And so we also have to be sensitive to those areas. So, so look, we, we think that having those values is very important and that's actually why we felt like on Friday when we announced the fact that now we had a new set of, of um from my understanding of what's going on, Susan's morals and her statement from 2018 applies to Lion Maker to this very day. We know the three strike rule on YouTube. You get penalized three times and you are terminated off the website. But my question here is why are we letting a pedophile on our platform that is A, a man that has been convicted of his crimes, and B, a danger to children? Would that be because Susan thinks it's a part of culture because the age of consent in the UK is 16? If that was so, I find it very hard to believe anyone from the UK would say it's in their culture to date a 16 year old when you're 28 years old. But the double standard of what we're trying to allude to here is that you can be someone that has been convicted of predatory behavior online and still continue your time on YouTube, but for people like myself and other commentators constantly having to watch what we have to say or else we're going to be penalized for criticizing someone. But when being compared to a convicted pedophile, then the issue doesn't apply to you? 
I find that to be absolutely disgusting. And while on the topic of absolutely disgusting, what about Pelichin Entertainment? If you're unaware of Pelichin, to give a quick recap of who he is, he is a man that uploads vlog type videos where he grabbed the most random of topics. But the most notable thing is his like to dislike ratio. And that like to dislike ratio came from his most recent controversy and that was abusing and killing his cats on camera. This incident blew up rather quickly and people all over the YouTube community were mass flagging his videos and messaging Team YouTube to deal with this issue. But we can only take a wild guess of what YouTube did. Well, no, they didn't do anything. His channel is still online and he's still uploading to this very day. If there's one thing to grab from this situation is that this clearly violated YouTube's community guidelines of violent content and graphic content. But when you broke your cat's spinal cord, stepping on it repeatedly, then suffocating it, you would expect it to be taken right off the platform. But where the comparison in the double standard takes place is when Moist Critical uploads a video of a fake road rage incident and this video gets taken down from violent and graphic content. And even YouTube states that content content that involves fights, beatings, and more get taken down off their platform, and I find it to be really funny when YouTube was cornered during this situation about taking down Critical's video, how they reinstated it saying it was a mistake. What I'm not understanding is that how it doesn't take any public notoriety for YouTube to take action against Moist Critical's video, but when it comes to someone like Pelican Entertainment, there could be a mob of internet hashtags and videos made on the situation, and YouTube doesn't take action against people who are actually problematic to the platform and haven't been dealt with. Anywho, that's all I have to say for this video. Once again, my name is Rith, and thank you all for listening. So as we all know, the commentary scene is overall seen as one of, if not the most problematic communities here on YouTube. However, people outside the commentary community will gladly gloss over the beauty community, a community that is riddled with cause and drama just like ours over here. But this is something that's already been pointed out time and time again, so why did I bring it up? Well, it's because there's obviously a double standard at play here. It'd be utterly pointless for me to bring up an unrelated topic. A young man nearly got his budding career ended by a few truly depraved individuals he once associated with last year. We all know what happened to James Charles. Yet those who tried committing character assassination on James never had any sanctions put onto them by YouTube even though they had broken community guidelines while being pushed onto the trending tab. Character assassination isn't a crime by that name, but it would constitute as slander, which is a crime here in the United States. Whereas when Leafy had made his 12 videos with Pokemon in the title alone, only about 3 of them actually relating to her, and when Mumkey Jones went on his spree of mocking Elliot Rogers, both ended in getting terminated without any notice. No consequences were given by YouTube themselves to people who committed a literal crime, but will terminate someone who is using Pokemon as clickbait and someone who is mocking an incel school shooter. Leafy's termination wasn't the beginning of YouTube wanting to rid itself of the commentary community though. It was with Monkey Jones back in 2018, and ever since then, we've had a perpetual bullseye on our backs, with YouTube hardscoping us waiting for someone, anyone, to make one wrong move. YouTube, as we know it, has all the cards needed to destroy the commentary community in their hands. It's their platform and technically they can do whatever they please, even if it has no morality. And let me tell you, YouTube's morals are near non-existent, like a typical large-scale corporation. Free speech? What's that? Satire? Oh, that doesn't exist. But a community that rivals ours with the amount of drama we have? They'll promote that to no end, with at least one beauty related video trending every day, while we are actively being silenced and beaten into the ground by the algorithm. They'll actively change it to do that as well. Even as soon as a few days ago there was a change to the algorithm that is currently affecting the commentary scene's views, originally pointed out by Keemstar, but then elaborated upon by Bo Blacks. This is, in my opinion, YouTube fine-tuning the algorithm to snuff out people related to the commentary scene once and for all. But it's not like YouTube and dear old Susan weren't already trying to contain us. As previously said, Mumpkey Jones' termination was a precursor to them clapping down on us. And the deletion of iDubbbz' leafy content cop and Gokunaru's the death of H3H3 only confirmed that. But it seems like with every recent change to the algorithm has YouTube trying to further bury us. It's gotten to the point where we will take down and cannibalize one another before laying eyes upon the next big ticket item. The current one being Ethan Klein of H3H3 Productions, of course. It's like YouTube is hosting the Hunger Games, 
and our participants are us commentators. All right, boys. So, um, Lucid had me on his channel to talk about family channels, and honestly, I think family channels are some of the biggest scumbag channels on the internet. All right, so there's a few things that I just can't really talk about, and they're inappropriate. And here lies the problem with family channels. They are a complete double standard by definition. A complete double standard. A lot of times, family channels, like for example, the Ace family, will exploit the way that their child um, looks. Let's just say that. For example, the dad was making um, very suggestive comments towards his daughter, and then spanked her on the butt and um, I don't know about you but that is pretty disgusting and the same guy that you know was making inappropriate comments towards his daughter was actually letting his daughter lick a phallic object you know all on YouTube all for some YouTube content all for some good old monetization money and guess what that video was on trending you know if anyone else did that if anyone else did that in the community they would be completely canceled and probably also taken off of the platform completely especially in the commentary community but whenever it comes down to family channels YouTube gets to see past all of that they just act like it never happened they just don't care they just ignore it there's another kind of family channel it's very kid friendly content that is like you know based around a relationship which is what i would consider a family channel and the girl clickbaited her husband game ending bro not joking she did and guess what happened in that video you maybe think that it got age restricted maybe even strike down off the platform no you would be extremely wrong on both of those in fact not only did it stay on the platform but it was also on trending for every single country now do i think family channels are like the worst Worst thing on YouTube? No, I don't. But I think that if YouTube is going to hold other creators to the standard, they should also hold the creators that are bringing in them the most money, which are family channels. Because while family channels don't seem problematic on the surface, the most problematic YouTubers usually are kids content creators, which those kind of content creators need to be held accountable for their actions because they're setting a very awful example for the children that are watching their content. It's just another example, really, of how YouTube favors certain creators just because they make them more money and just because they bring them in more views and more audience retention. It's nothing more than that because it's not like YouTube and the creators of YouTube, the people that run YouTube like their content because let's just be honest, YouTube is pretty much ran by robots. Like the people that run YouTube are like seriously lifeless. They just pick the people that seem the most child friendly to put on trending. I just think this is a little ridiculous because people like myself are subject to even being taken off of the platform or demonetized just because I have a unpopular opinion. Yet you can clickbait your own children, exploit them even in a very uh, disgusting way, let's just say that, and you can clickbait your own game and that gets on trending i don't know man it's just pretty lame to me but i hope you guys did enjoy my part and enjoy the rest of the video all right men so family vlogging channels on the platform they're pretty awful i mean it's very rare to find a family vlogging channel that anyone actually like respects because to be real with you a lot of people in the whole vlogging industry are pretty scummy i'm not gonna lie to you however today we're not here to talk about the vlogging channels themselves well kind of but we're gonna be talking about the golden boy of youtube logan paul now you may be saying well hey logan paul doesn't really do vlogs anymore well today's example goes back three years ago yeah you heard me three years ago and this actually still reflects a problem with youtube today and i thought you know if i'm invited on this video it would be fair to bring up this example right here now this dates back over three years ago now you may be wondering well hey what happened three years ago that shows youtube's double standards when it comes to family vlogging channels or family friendly creators in general and why do they favor them well i think we all remember logan paul's classic suicide forest stunt i mean who doesn't man this man is still clung to this day for that awful stunt now this video right here violated YouTube guidelines, obviously. I mean, it showed a fucking dead guy swinging from a tree all purple and shit, you know? But YouTube, they did not take down that video for violations of YouTube guidelines. You know who did take it down? Logan Paul. And if you want more proof that, you know, YouTube actually saw the video, they literally put it on trending. It was like, if I remember correctly, number six trending. And I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that the trending tab is like manually selected. So if that video doesn't violate YouTube guidelines enough to the point where it would go on trending, despite the fact it violates one of YouTube's own rules, how come a video discussing the situation over three years ago was taken down for violent or graphic content yeah you heard me correctly the actual video showing a purple dead body swinging from a tree didn't violate guidelines but a guy using call of duty gameplay known as birdman talking about the situation his video was taken down for violent and graphic content and then when he went to appeal youtube instead of saying like oh yeah we fucked up here we're sorry they doubled down and rejected his appeal i'll play you a clip right now
It's not just my video that was removed. There's multiple other big YouTubers out there as well who also got their videos removed, including PewDiePie, who is literally the biggest YouTuber on the platform. And the real problem with this is that YouTube did not remove Logan Paul's original video. Logan Paul removed that video himself, but I'm just going to show you guys what they said to me. So if you go to my video manager, it tells me the video video was removed for misleading or insufficient metadata. Now, metadata is like your title, tags, description, that type of stuff. Clearly, none of this in my video was misleading in any way, but I also found that if you go to the actual watch page where the video used to be, there it will tell you that the video has been removed for violent or graphic content. You know, it really is amazing that you can do anything you want as a vlogging channel or a family friendly channel because I mean at the end of the day man in YouTube's eyes you're making them a lot of money you're family friendly you make the platform look good the whole nine yards you get a get out of jail free card for literally anything because well for the reasons I just listed off however if you are a commentary channel and you dare to criticize YouTube's money machine your video will get taken down for quote violent or graphic content which is ironic because you know the video they were discussing literally violated that guideline in like every single way possible but hey man talking about it over gameplay and YouTube's eyes, it's illegal. Like, you just can't do it on the website. But if you want to go in the suicide forest and film a dead body swinging from the tree, that's all good as long as your name is Logan Paul. But if you're a commentary channel, which, you know, doesn't really do any of the things I've listed off, you know, they don't really make the platform look good, you know, they're not too family friendly, you know, the whole nine yards of stuff YouTube really doesn't like, then they're going to try to take you down at any moment whatsoever. But if you're family friendly, you can get away with literally anything on the platform. It doesn't just apply to this situation. There are many examples of family family vlogging channels getting away with stuff that literally any other channel would not manage to get away with but because these channels are you know the prince family the royalty family the ace family because they have the word family in their channel name they can do whatever they want and youtube won't bat an eye because why would they at the end of the day they're making a the money right i don't know man i just find youtube systems to be really fucking retarded if you guys enjoyed my segment on this video you can come over to my channel and sub if not it's all right no pressure i really don't care anyways thanks to elucid for letting me hop on the video really does mean a lot and yeah i'm out peace there are still things that i haven't brought up yet for example kokunari's video on h3a3 is still down however the reaction response h3 made is still on his channel which is really a big double standard or juice world getting promised by the youtube ceo to get help with subs and this is obviously a major issue because of the double standards that go between music and content creators for example, making a video and making a song are both a form of creating art, and they shouldn't be censored unless intention of harming an individual at least. Keemstar getting shadow banned due to the drama, and h is still free to do whatever he wants. Without the platform taking any action on him, I just find it so... wrong. It feels like it's really just left to the creators to criticize him in this situation. Maybe, hopefully, he'll notice his actions. However, that's not where the double standards stop. They can be found in any aspect of YouTube today. A few days ago, I noticed a tweet from Team YouTube on Twitter which was discussing how they suspended the Elk Boys channel from the partner program, all because of hosting a series of parties during the pandemic. Keep in mind, they did this out of the platform, and even though I don't agree with the Elk Boys' actions, I personally believe it was wrong of YouTube to do so. We'll just be playing devil's advocate in a way, because I find it funny how YouTube will find it easy to suspend them from the partner program, but won't do the same to Jake Paul after participating in the act of looting in June in Arizona. They also wouldn't suspend him when the FBI had literally raided his estate either, but they'll suspend Nelk after breaking guidelines and not committing crimes. I think it's quite clear that YouTube doesn't even know what they're doing in these situations. They won't suspend people who've committed crimes, but will suspend Terminator or strike people who've broken guidelines. But I think it's quite obvious that YouTube likes to over-apply its guidelines and rules on the wrong people. When there are people who've done much worse actions, it's not sickening, but it's disgusting in my eyes to see YouTube abuse its powers at the wrong times. Maybe it's just me, but personally I believe they should focus on working on their moderating system on the website, where we literally have channels getting false strikes and hacked more and more every day because they aren't a ecosystem, they're a video sharing platform. And I personally believe that they should focus on themselves before they stay out of their lane and try to focus on things out of the platform. The end of edge and satire on YouTube. Essentially, the end of commentary. Despite Filthy Frank's videos slowly being taken down and Leafy getting banned off of YouTube and possibly perma banned off of Twitch, 
There really isn't much to expect of these social platforms anymore, because everyone has become sensitive to satire in today's light. Whether his channel is coming back or not, things will remain different on the platform. Especially after the changes that were made recently, because unlike last time, it wasn't just a choice of him to come back or not, it was the amount of people who reacted to it in the way that they did, in order to de-platform him. That being said, I'm Lucid. I want to thank Ryamu, Rifro, and everyone who helped with the video, because it was definitely fun putting it together, especially doing the research. And if there was anything I really learned throughout making this video, it was that there's only so far a platform can go until they try to control every viewer and creator. The platform's greatest fear is the platform itself. But you should never underestimate the ability of a content creator to adapt in its own environment. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys have a good day.